Shalom. Today we're going to be speaking about harmonizing a Haftorah. So we're going to pick a low key B minor as our bass key and take the basic trope and go through how to harmonize it as well as a few variations. And we're going to use a little keyboard called Classroom Maestro. So let's get you there now, right? Let's get you there right now. Okay. All right. So let's use the basic trope. For instance, Mercha would be harmonized with a B minor chord. So I'm gonna go from B minor to E minor, and I use a different inversion, and I just lift up the B, the D to an E, and the F sharp to a G. Once again, so that's an E minor chord in second inversion. Here's root inversion. I take the E, play it up on top for first inversion, and then take the G, play it up here instead, and that's E minor in second inversion. So just using basically one four, five, one in minor. The one chord is minor. The four chord is minor. Four. And then the five chord is dominant. In my music theory videos, you will see how the dominant is naturally minor in the key of B minor. But we change it to major to sound like it's moving from one chord to another in powerful harmony. Now, let's get into the variations. It's very sad and minor, but sometimes I like harmonizing it because it's an E, and I go to a major instead of a minor. Since it's an E note, I'm not affected by the major. There's no clash there. So you have an option. Or if you wanted to do this first inversion, that's an E chord in first inversion. That's the root. You just have to get your fingers used to playing that chord progression. I threw in another variation of the E minor there. Once I go to the E major, I then like to retract that before I go back to B minor. 
in the next phrase. So if I say, then munachet nachta, or munachet nachta. So munachet should be back to B minor. Munachet nachta, or munachet nachta, if we're still in the major. Mercha hatibcha, mercha sof once again. Either major or minor. Let's do minor. Once you go to E minor, there's another variation where you could go to E minor six. It's just an added color on the E minor chord. It's still E minor. So let's throw in the E minor sixth, or otherwise known as the C sharp half diminished. It's the same chord, just called by a different name. If I take the C sharp and put it up here, it's an E minor sixth. Here it's a C sharp half diminished. Let's start again. We're on the major. Once again. So that's pretty cool. We could do this in different keys as well. For instance, in C minor, to F minor, let's say we're going to F major instead of F minor. G is the dominant. So we could do that in any key. Uh, I'm pretty facile in different keys. So if I'm an A minor for someone with a really low voice, or A minor is an E7. We skip B flat minor. There's the half diminished. So F is the dominant of E flat minor. And we could go into E flat minor as well if we wanted to get into the in-between keys. If we want that, there's your half diminished. Fine. Let's go back to our regular key, B minor. Now, let's say we have Ravi. So that would be just like my path, Ravi. If we did major, it's your choice. It's all creativity. If you want to change that major into a minor midstream in the middle of a word, it's all good. So you have major minor 
or half diminished. All are harmonizing that E. For those who have a little bit of background in classical music, or if you've been following some YouTube videos where you could play a different bass note, I could play the D in the bass instead of Rivi. It's basically B minor. Take off the D and play it an octave lower. So I would do Rivi. It has a sense of not being complete or settled. Rivi. My pa pa sta. Let's see how we're gonna harmonize. My pa pa sta. Or maybe we'll do a major. It's possible. And we get a dominant to tonic relationship. Now, Zakev Katon. So, da 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 outlines that E minor. Zakev Katon. Zakev Katon. If you really wanted to get detailed and harmonize, Zakev Katon. For the purposes of this video and in general, I wouldn't overdo it. If you wanna, it's a nice little interesting alternate inner harmony line there for you. Zakef E minor, ka, back to B minor, or Zakef Katon. Now, we wouldn't want to do E major here because Zakef. That's really not working with E major, even if it's a sharp nine for those jazz players usually sharp nine goes to a flat nine so that's not going to work no so we're not going to use the e major in that case now that would work like a c major seventh if you want to get a little humble and like a little mellow Sounds pretty. Zakev Katon. If you're recording a Haftorah and maybe you want a little variation, you might use that instead of C. The all you're doing is adding that C. Zakev. It's like an added color. So it's actually this rub of the B and C happen not on the top, which is where you want it. You don't want it on top here because it kind of makes the melody line unclear. It's not on the melody anyway. Let's get that C major seventh in there. And that has a nice progression from a little jazzy, you know, based on or now, here's a variation on the tonic. Da -da -da -da. Now, flat six chord. Da -da -da -da. 
I find that works as well. Doing a flat six major seventh chord as a sort of a deceptive cadence. Instead of going to the one, we're deceptively putting a little, you know, pulling the rug out from underneath the tonic. We didn't even try the half diminished on G sharp. Sounds actually pretty nice. And then you have room to go. And let's do that deceptive cadence. And you can end right there. You don't have to go. You could just end that. And I threw in the A there as a color to make it a G major 7 to add 9 or a G major 9. Normal position of the ninth would be up here. But you could hug it and hide it down here getting a little bit maybe out there for some of you, but I apologize about that. Let's stick with the basics for you, and if you want to explore these, feel free to. I like that. Instead of C major 7, we can do A minor. That's sort of in that family of... So this is just a replacement, as you know. So is mostly G and E. So we're just taking two notes down from the E, throwing the color in, or or could be harmonized with that G half diminished. It's a little out there, and I'll tell you why. Because you have a G sharp in there. Once again, that's what we were bought. That, that's a G sharp, by the way. That's the G major seventh, which is very close to the G sharp half diminished. I'm in the mood for that G major 7th, it's very mellow, and I have a G in the bass playing down here. Fine. Now, the Kadma, which is that, that symbol that looks like a Pashta, but if it's not on its home position on the last letter, and it's on another letter, and you don't see a Pashta on that last letter, it's a kadma, and you don't do. It's just kadma, and then you have that same option of kadma or kadma or kadma. Any one of those three: E major, E minor, or E minor sixth, or C sharp half diminished. Kadma, kadma, uh, or E six. Um, kadma, my pa pashta. So what are we going to Now, on the Pashta, if you want to harmonize that note, you could have a B7 Pashta. Instead of B minor, we're going to turn that one chord into a major chord or dominant. That's called a 5 of 4. It's a secondary dominant, which leads to the 4. So it's a 5 of 4. Secondary dominant, B7 which is basically just that one minor transformed into a major with a dominant. 
and you could do that. If you want to add the flat nine, hush, I'm playing a B in the bass. That gets even a little more colorful. Uh, I'll play it for you up here. It's a B7 with the flat nine and the seventh. Basically, it's a diminished chord on top, but we understand that diminished chord has a upper structure chord A diminished with the B in the bass, or we think of the B, seventh, flat nine, third, major third, Raphael fifth. Hi, Raphael.